Infusing oil with garlic or herbs has been something that a lot of people want to do. You can find it on the market if you go to a, a specialty shop or even at the supermarket, you can find oil with some kind of an herb in it. But we've recommended that people not do it very much at home because of the potential for developing botulism toxin, which is deadly. Uh, so the only way that you could do it is to infuse the oil with the herb or the garlic for a, and keep it on the room temperature for two or three days or put it in the refrigerator for a couple of months. But that's not what generally folks want to do. Researchers, however, as we progress with science, have found a way to do this and enable you to keep it at room temperature for a fairly long time. So uh, we're going to go through that. There are very specific directions that you have to follow, and you'll, you'll be able to find those connected with the show. Uh, but you can only do it with garlic, and any kind of garlic will work. And then you can do it with three herbs. You can do it with basil, rosemary, or oregano. That's it. So follow it with those. You can mix the herbs garlic and herbs don't mix together so uh, make a plan and stick with the instructions as closely as you can it's kind of like canning with low acid food you have to follow specific researched instructions in order to safely do it and it's the same thing and the same reason it's the botulism issue so i've got two cups of warm water and i'm going to add um, citric acid to that, one level tablespoon of citric acid, and you're going to stir that in the warm water until it's completely dissolved. Now citric acid you can find, it's the same stuff we use when we can tomatoes if you don't want to use commercially bottled lemon juice. Uh, you can find it uh, in some stores in the canning section. Uh, most pharmacies will also carry it, so you should be able to find it. The powdered kind is going to work great. That's ready to go. Now, I've got this two ways. I've got the garlic done, and I've got it done ahead. Now, in order for this to work, what we're going to be doing is we've got the citric acid, which is going to acidify uh, what we're putting in. Botulism toxin will not be developed in an acid medium. So uh, we're acidifying the garlic. I've got about 2 thirds of a cup of garlic here. Uh, and it's been sitting overnight in the citric acid mixture. But let's back up and see what we do with the herbs. Uh, with the herbs, I've got about one and a half cups loosely packed. As I said, you can mix them. So I've got oregano and rosemary here. We want to make sure that it's submerged. Notice that the garlic has not got a problem with that because it sinks. But the herbs tend to float. And we want to make sure that everything is, is under the acid medium. So in order to make this work, we're going to put a, another bowl on top of that. That's going to keep it under the water. And we're going to let that sit for 24 hours. If it needs to go a little longer, that's OK. But you don't want it to go less. Now, because there's chlorophyll in here, the color on this is going to change and not be nearly as attractive later. But we need to make sure that everything in the bottle is acidified. So even though you're going to lose the color, you can leave some of these herbs in the oil when it's stored, but you can't put a fresh sprig in uh, because it won't have been acidified as you do so. I'm going to set these aside. Room temperature, 24 hours. You can probably cover that with a towel or something just to make sure nothing else gets in it as well. Now this is the garlic that we've had acidifying for a little over 24 hours. As I said, a little bit longer is fine, a little bit less is not. And we're, we're ready to move forward on this and actually combine it with the oil. The acid has penetrated the garlic. The other thing you need to notice is that this garlic is chopped. You want to get it so that it's chopped in about a quarter of an inch pieces not any more if possible. You can see I've got whole garlic here. The problem with whole garlic as opposed to the chopped garlic is the acid is not going to penetrate in the same rate. And so you'll have pieces that are not acidified and again you run the risk of, of having uh, toxin develop as a result. And the next step is to try and get as much water out of here as you can. So I'm actually going to pat the, the garlic a little bit dry with some paper towels just to make sure I get as much oil or as much water out as I can because that will cause the oil to de uh, deteriorate later. So uh, roll that up, let it dry. And now we're ready to mix it with the oil. Now how much you actually are going to mix in with your oil is going to be dependent a little bit on, on you. Uh, the researchers found that one part garlic to 10 parts of oil. So I have 10 parts of oil here for about a, for comparing tablespoons, 10 tablespoons. And that's probably a little bit too much. We can, again, it's not critical that it's uh, too much or too little. Uh, you're going to put that in the oil, and you're going to let that sit. 
and marinate for a period of one to 10 days. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to transfer this and it probably would have been easier if I put the oil into the jar first instead of having to transfer them both. But I'm transferring it to the jar where the storage is going to take place. Now, one of the things I want to happen here is you notice it's a dark jar. And these are canning, this is a canning jar, and I generally don't recommend the dark variety uh, simply because uh, you can't tell if there's a problem with, with spoilage later on in canned foods. But with this oil, oil deteriorates when it's warm and when light is getting into it. So with a dark jar, we can let this sit for about 10 days uh, and keep it in a dark, cool place as well, and we're gonna have less deterioration of the oil. Now normally what you'd wanna do is fill this jar up a little bit more, so make twice as much as I did this time. And the reason for that is simply because when you have more in the jar, you're gonna have a smaller uh, surface area or less air in the jar, and that's gonna allow less of the deterioration or the oxidation of the oils going Going on. The other thing that you probably should look at is what kind of oil you're using. I used olive oil because garlic and olive oil go together well. They're often used in the same foods. Uh, the same can be done with the herbs because of the same reasons. Uh, you could also use canola oil and because the uh, fatty acid profile is very similar, they don't have as many polyunsaturated fatty acids as do some of the other types of oil. And so they're going to deteriorate more slowly than some of those would. So the, there's a lot of information that you need to read through and follow through. Uh, but this is going to go in, as I said, put a lid on it, cool, dark place. Uh, and this is going to take about 10 days. Now, after those 10 days are up, uh, start checking it a little bit, uh, maybe five, six, seven days, and find out how strong the oil is getting. When it's as strong as you want it to taste, it's done. And you can filter out the garlic. If you don't want to filter out the garlic, that's fine. But it's going to keep getting stronger and stronger in taste, and you may get to the point where you don't like it anymore. So check it every once in a while. Make sure it's OK. Again, don't put in a fresh clove of garlic to make it look pretty if you strain this stuff out, because it won't be acidified. Uh, don't put in fresh herbs. You're going to do basically the same thing with, if you use herbs, but don't put in fresh ones, because again, they're not going to be acidified. The botulism toxin question arises again at that point. A lot of specifics to follow. It's really not hard, though. The hardest thing to do is probably chopping all that garlic. I hope you'll give it a try. Make your own infusion at home. For Oklahoma Gardening, this is Barbara Brown. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.